Hi everyone. Wherever you are, I pray that you and your families are well. I was thinking the other day about John Stott, the late theologian from the UK. In 2005, Time Magazine ranked him as one of the 100 most influential persons in the world. He authored over 50 books, one of which is entitled Between Two Worlds. He said that preachers need to hold the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other to take the timeless Word of God and apply it in a timely manner. Last week, I received a special gift in the mail from a covenant pastor. It's a P.P. Waldenstrom New Testament commentary printed in 1892. It belonged to someone's great-grandfather who emigrated from Sweden. P.P. Waldenstrom was one of the first mission friends and the most influential leader and theologian in the Swedish Mission Covenant Church. He spent 11 years translating the New Testament into Swedish. Waldenstrom also served as president of the Swedish Mission Covenant Church. No one knows for sure, but the question, where is it written, may have originated from him. It certainly became a refrain of those early mission friends. They sought to understand the heart of God and discern how to walk together in faith. This book tells us that the church is the body of Christ. The mission and message of Jesus lives and breathes through the church. As followers of Jesus, we proclaim and demonstrate the whole gospel. The Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other. Recently, USA Today published a cover story with these words. It was supposed to be a two-week quarantine. Instead, it was a year of indescribable loss. Lost family, lost jobs, lost hope. COVID-19 ripped the country apart, killing more than 500,000 people and erasing years of economic gains. It was a year ago in mid-March that the shutdowns began. I remember this specifically because our second granddaughter, Brooklyn, was born on March 14th. I noticed all sorts of changes happening at the hospital. Little did I know the massive impact that was upon us. When I hold the Bible in one hand and the newspaper in the other, I'm convinced that the church was built for times like this. The gospel communicated through the local church is the hope of the world. Together, we fulfill the Great Commission through the truth of God's Word and the power of God's Spirit. The local church is God's basic unit of mission. Missiologist David Blesch writes, The church does not have a mission. The mission has a church. Mission is the central organizing principle of the church, and the Holy Spirit is the blazing center of that mission. Our mission is to join God in God's mission to see more disciples among more populations in a more caring and just world. As a mosaic of mission friends, we go where God is already working. The Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, According to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. In January 2020, during my Midwinter President's Update, I shared these two verses, believing that this is what God was going to do in the covenant in 2020. Then COVID-19 hit a few weeks later. None of us had any idea what was coming down the road how painful 2020 would prove to be, or just how much the Holy Spirit would actually move. We experience so many challenges and losses that continue. COVID rages on, continuing to impact our churches, the way we do ministry, as well as our communities, families, relationships, traditions, jobs, finances, and more. Each of us has experienced so much loss and change. What's more, the horrific killing of George Floyd in May of 2020, followed by other deaths, illuminated how much we are living in a pandemic of racism. 
We've seen too many heartbreaking examples of violence and division that heighten fear and anxiety already present in our world. Our own annual meeting and midwinter conference were canceled due to COVID. We missed the opportunity to gather together as sisters and brothers in Christ, and we felt that loss. God says in Isaiah chapter 43, verse one and two, do not fear, I have summoned you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. None of us will soon forget how difficult the past year was and all we had to navigate, fight for, and endure. In spite of all this, as followers of Jesus, we can say with truth and confidence, God is faithful. God continued to move in powerful ways and graciously gave us the opportunity to live out the greatest commandments, to love God and our neighbors. In response to the pandemic, we saw resilience and hope arise. New Abbey Covenant Church in Waukegan, Illinois, began making and distributing hand sanitizer to their community. Alaskan Christian College staff drove hundreds of miles through a raging snowstorm to help their students get home before their villages closed. During the early days of shelter in place, Covenant churches and associations quickly shifted their methods from on-site to online. Pivoting in this way was the Association Latina de la Gazia del Bacto Evangelico, the Covenant Association of Latina and Latino Pastors. They offered an online forum in Spanish to help raise awareness of COVID-19. Pastor Israel Solomon of the Harbor Covenant Church in Los Angeles led his congregation to be the hands and feet of Jesus and do what the local church is intended to do, reach out and care for its community. Even though his church had opened its doors just three months before the pandemic hit, when they learned they would not be able to physically gather in person, they decided to use their rent money to help their neighbors. To date, more than $15,000 has been given to pay for families' rent and groceries and to provide supplies to help keep them safe. Additionally, the church has financially supported nonprofit organizations and small businesses in South Los Angeles that are struggling to stay open. Thank you, Pastor Solomon and your congregation for showing us what it means to pivot toward mission and continue to be salt and light in these challenging days. These are just a few examples of how covenanters authentically shared the love of Jesus in word and deed. Across the denomination, the Evangelical Covenant Church quickly assembled resources and offered financial relief assistance to help our churches and people face the turbulent times and gain missional traction. The Covenant Financial Relief Initiative was created by the Covenant Executive Board, Covenant Ministries of Benevolence, Covenant Leaders, and with the support of many generous donors. This initiative continues to provide funds to support four crucial areas of Covenant life and ministry. First, short-term loans to local churches, conferences, and camps. Second, global missional relief grants to the global church as we walk alongside partners serving marginalized people around the world. Third, missional relief grants to churches in North America who are caring for their local communities in response to this pandemic. And finally, the Minister's Crisis Fund for Covenant Clergy, which helps us care for our pastor's needs, such as counseling and healthcare or emergency home repairs beyond their local church's ability to provide. While everyone has been impacted by the pandemic, the generosity of the Covenant Church family remains strong. Just over $250,000 in COVID relief funds were sent to our Covenant Global Partners in 29 countries through Covenant World Relief. 
Our missional relief grants provided $613,400 in grant monies to 49 churches. Our COVID financial relief initiative enabled us to lend approximately $300,700 to four churches and four camps. We continue to support our covenant clergy and church staff designating $150,000 of the financial relief initiative to help struggling churches pay their staff health benefits. These gifts offset the 2021 Bethany benefits premium increase to the health plan. We are a denomination that shares, not hoards. We have an abundance mindset, not a scarcity mindset. We reaffirm our ongoing desire to shepherd people well and steward resources well for God's glory and neighbor's good, as the early covenanters used to say. 2020 was a year in which it was important to remember that the church, the ecclesia, is the gathered and scattered people of God, no matter how we meet, no matter where we meet. Today, we continue to be the church, a mosaic of mission friends centered on proclaiming and demonstrating the whole gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic that knocked on the doorsteps of our communities and homes in March, covenant leaders and churches responded to the call of our six-fold test for multi-ethnic ministry by practicing solidarity in May. Our sisters and brothers, our friends and neighbors, and our society ask questions like, in what ways are we standing with and advocating for the multi-ethnic mosaic of which we're all part? How are we sharing in the suffering of others on an individual and communal level? We responded by prioritizing and pressing into being an interconnected body. We intentionally mourned with those who were mourning, hurting, and grieving during the racial pandemic, a pandemic that still continues today. I'm grateful to Community Covenant Church, Sanctuary Covenant Church, Destino Covenant Church, and their pastors, Mauricio, Luke, and Edrin in Minneapolis. In the midst of grief, frustration, and outrage, they stepped in to serve their communities. As a mosaic of mission friends, many other covenant churches and pastors and leaders took a stand during this time of racial turmoil and unrest to love well in Jesus' name. As a multi-ethnic denomination, we seek for the evangelical covenant church to become an authentic reflection of the kingdom of God here on earth, as depicted in Revelation 7, verse 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. As one of my colleagues says, diversity is not a problem to be solved. It is a revelatory gift and a story to be told. The covenant is telling that story and setting a good pace for others to follow. We continue to grow in our ability to cultivate eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to feel, and hands to serve, to respond to the suffering of our sisters and brothers, both near and far. Our lives are meant to be missional, evangelistic, and transformational, so that people may come to know Christ through our sacrificial love for one another. May our love reflect the unity, healing, and reconciliation we find in God's enduring kingdom. May this unity be an antidote to the polarization ripping away at the fabric of our land. With the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we will continue to do all we can to abide by the command Christ gave us in John 13, 34 through 35. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We also began to understand last year that one of the best ways to learn is not to speak, but to listen. It was a time of listening for us as a covenant. 
Our role as a denominational team is to come together to equip and resource the local church to do the mission of God. We acknowledge that we can do a better job. We hear you. We too had to pivot, and to help us do it well, we launched Mission Revision. Mission Revision is our own focus on how to do our mission better, and it led to the formation of the Strategic Alignment Team and the Location Advisory Committee. Mission Revision exists to help us listen well, to listen to you, and learn the very best ways to efficiently and effectively support all of you, our conferences and local churches, and to do all of this in a financially sustainable way. We held listening sessions with conferences, ethnic associations, boards, and members of our denominational leadership team, ministerium, denominational staff, and many more. We were so grateful that more than 700 people engaged between surveys and in-person interviews. Our online survey generated 3,000 individual hand-type comments, and we conducted 29 sessions with focus groups. My thanks to everyone for honestly sharing your thoughts, experiences, and ideas. They will influence and shape the manner in which we support and resource the conferences and local churches for years to come. And while some progress has been made, our greatest work remains ahead, and that includes building trust and transparency. You see, the past year showed us that while the methods may change, the mission remains the same. We are filled with hope. We are grateful to join God and God's mission to see more disciples among more populations in a more caring and just world. Our mission priorities remain constant, to start and strengthen churches, make and deepen disciples, develop leaders, love mercy, do justice, and serve globally. I am deeply appreciative of our denominational team and all they do to advance the mission of the Evangelical Covenant Church and ultimately the mission of God. We continue to press into our vision points of leaders developing leaders, churches planning churches, fostering the flourishing of women, disciples making disciples through evangelism, and mission from everywhere to everywhere, responding to God's call to do justice and love mercy. And we know that all ministry will bear fruit only through the power of the Holy Spirit, who is the blazing center of our mission. Our denominational team shifted and created online and virtual program that continues to meet the needs of local churches, enabling them to further the mission of God through the work of the covenant. With the Holy Spirit guiding us, we turned obstacles into opportunities. Much of the work of Start and Strengthen Churches is helping churches plant churches. Three church planning assessment centers took place in 2020. Of those approved to plant, 60% were leaders of color and 40% were women. In the covenant, we believe that women are called and gifted for every ministry role in the church. Every potential planter join one of six affinity cohorts to receive additional training for six months as they move toward their launch date. All trainings and cohorts were conducted in both Spanish and English. The assessment centers and training events were recontextualized and reformatted for a digital environment. As long as the Holy Spirit continues to call church planners, we will continue to plant churches. Do you know why? Because more people come to know Christ through church planting than by any other means. Missional Vitality made the shift by providing short-term help to address immediate needs within the church. The Vitality team held online workshops featuring Carrie Newhoff's 30-day pivot series. These workshops were attended by pastors and their teams, as well as conference and denominational personnel. Together, we reimagined church, shifting to new methods while preserving the gospel message. 
In a world that is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, Carrie reminds us that agility is the new superpower. One of the churches that embraced the 30-day pivot series is Oakdale Covenant Church on the south side of Chicago. Oakdale's pastor, Dr. D. Darrell Griffin, had this to say. At the beginning of the pandemic, we needed transition and planning resources for this new season of ministry. To help us with this, we turned to our denomination, the Covenant, and to start and strengthen churches for assistance for planning for our church and for our school. Vitality Coordinator Dr. Mary Hendrickson introduced me to a new assessment resource, the 30-Day Pivot by leadership expert Carrie Newhoff. This assessment tool transcends congregational size, ethnic identity, and cultural context. In fact, it requires diversity and buy-in from the entire congregation. This resource and others from the Covenant proved relevant for our current crisis and help churches gain even more missional traction. The goal of pivoting is not to go back to the way things were, but to move forward into the new things that God is doing. If you're struggling to find transition and planning resources, the covenant has you covered. We even have coaches to help and guide you along the way. Thank you to Pastor Griffin, who took a step in moving his congregation forward and adapting to our ever-changing world. Making Deep and Disciples helped us to resource disciples who make disciples. Two exciting innovations for our Bless Intentional Evangelism movement are now available thanks to this team. First, Bless now features a fully virtual option for submitting names via an online prayer card. And Bless in Living Color, a 10-day email devotional course to equip individuals in multi-ethnic evangelism just launched. You've heard me say, the greatest challenge and opportunity facing the Evangelical Covenant Church is evangelism. Bless, along with church planning, is helping us to meet this challenge. Crescendo. Our missional discipleship initiative for boomers and beyond continues to equip leaders in developing a holistic, balanced ministry through mentoring groups and coaches. When it comes to our next generation of future covenanters, even though Unite 2021 was postponed, Make and Deep and Disciples hosted 15 online gatherings with more than 3,000 participants. This included seven youth worker gatherings and our first virtual children's ministry conference called What's Next? Pastoring Children and Families in the Season Ahead. We trust that these timely resources will inspire our covenant churches as we join together in God's work to make disciples who make disciples. Develop leaders continue to care for and support our ministerium even while online. We held various virtual meetings, seminars, coaching, and spiritual direction. Develop leaders continues to leverage the Sustaining Pastoral Excellence Fund for grants enhancing character, competency, and constancy. In 2020, we were able to offer 16 constancy grants to pastors through Sustaining Pastoral Excellence. The $500 grants provided opportunities for pastors to take an opportunity to pause and reconnect with Christ. For recipients in this unprecedented year, this was a lifeline and a time to get away and reimagine what ministry looks like in this season. If you're a credentialed covenant pastor, I invite you to apply for an SPE grant. I want to especially thank our chaplains, our first responders, who every day put their lives on the line for the gospel. I encourage all of us to thank our chaplains. So if you know a chaplain, would you reach out and let them know how much you appreciate them? Chaplains often feel forgotten and isolated. In the covenant, would you join me in cherishing our chaplains? Develop leaders also began preparations for the denomination's first ever virtual service of 
ordination, commissioning, and consecration that will take place at Gather 2021. In the wake of the devastation of dual pandemics in black communities, a disproportionately higher rate of death due to COVID-19 and a disproportionately higher rate of death due to violence, Love Mercy Do Justice offered resources to black covenant pastors. Leveraging technology to minister specifically to this group of pastors, Love Mercy Do Justice provided a virtual soul care retreat in the fall. In-person events moved online, including 50 anti-racism cohorts, which have been attended by 380 ministers. In collaboration with the ministerium, they put on the Reimagine event, which was slated to take place during Gather 2020. More than 500 participants received this training, which would not have been possible in the original plan. During this past year, Serve Globally hosted an encouraging series of webinars. These webinars featured Covenant World Relief and Development Ministry partners who work in 30 countries. Our projects included economic development, education, peace and reconciliation, combating human trafficking and disaster relief. Tragically, there are an estimated 4.7 million persons trapped in sex trafficking today. The average age of a sex trafficked victim is horrifically 13 years old. During COVID, the online sexual exploitation of women and children has gotten worse. In response to God's call to help those who suffer unjustly, the covenant launched an initiative called FREE to address the evil of sex trafficking both locally and globally. The invitation to all is to stand in the gap alongside survivors and partners to fight this evil through our framework of pray, learn, give, and act domestically and globally. There are a suite of resources and opportunities for churches, small groups, and individuals to engage and experience transformative discipleship and mobilize to break the cycle of sex trafficking. The pandemic may have caused Serve Globally's merge trips to shut down, but it didn't stop Merge from ramping up their leadership to reach more people. Merge has become a ministry led by the global church, not just the U.S. and Canada. Dale Lusk is the only covenant leader who's part of a team of four other leaders from around the world. What a beautiful thing to have a ministry partnering with the global church that is also led by the global church. When many U.S. citizens were trying to return safely home from traveling abroad, our global personnel were trying to do the opposite. They were trying to get back to our sisters and brothers from around the world to serve alongside them. Jim and Heidi Peterson noted getting stranded in the United States was their biggest fear while God opened doors for them to return to Japan. Barb and Steve Swanson received prayers from all over the world, petitioning God to help persuade Sweden officials to grant the necessary documents for them to return. Their prayers were answered. Finally, our brother and pastor, James Tang, who days after burying his 17-year-old son, Ben, returned to Kenya. He went back to serve alongside our sister denomination of Ethiopia and South Sudan. One of the blessings of a digital world is having global personnel join our weekly staff connect gatherings for the denominational team. For me, it provides a sense of togetherness and unity that is surely welcome in these tumultuous times. My thanks and gratitude to all of our global personnel for their faithful and fearless service. Even during a worldwide pandemic, they continue to care, serve, pray, and model God's heart. Your support, prayers, and encouragement impacted lives of our faith family in the Democratic Republic of the Congo with medical, infrastructure, and economic development through Paul Carlson Partnership. Even during 2020, the sick were healed bridges built, and coffee harvested. In fact, the first shipment of coffee arrived at O'Hare Airport just a few weeks ago. 
the challenges of 2020 were met with hope, resources, and renewed energy for God's direction in 2021. Jesus will build his church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The examples I've mentioned are just some of the ways the covenant is living out the gospel. I am humbled and honored to serve in the Evangelical Covenant Church. I want to thank our covenant churches, conferences, and our many generous individuals. Through your partnership, we are advancing the mission through the multi-ethnic mosaic of churches of which we're all a part. You are making a difference. Behind every gift, there's a story to tell of transformation and hope. Real people in real places. These are the gifts of God for the people and mission of God. We have so much to celebrate, and I want to thank you for your generosity. Only God knows what 2021 will bring. Only God knows when the COVID pandemic will end. But here's what we do know. God does have a hope and a future for us. Together, we are a multi-ethnic mosaic of mission friends, proclaiming and demonstrating the whole gospel as we seek to live into the beloved community that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. described, we recognize that we have work to do. We want to fully reflect the vision of the kingdom table. We will stay at the table, no matter how uncomfortable it gets, in order to be one people with one God united by one great love. We are creating a Becoming the Beloved Community Resource Suite to aid us in closing the gap between that revelation vision and our current reality. These resources will include a sermon series focused on the sixfold test for multi-ethnic ministry, videos, small group study guide, and more. Early registration is now open for Gather 2021, which includes the 135th annual meeting of the Evangelical Covenant Church, the Ministerium Annual Meeting and Vocational Development, and the Commissioning, Ordination, and Credentialing Service. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the meeting will be held virtually from June 22nd through the 26th. I encourage each church to register their full complement of delegates to speak into the life and ministry of the Covenant Church. Though our gathering will be different, we are hoping that more churches will be able to send their delegates than ever before, as many of the barriers that have hindered participation in the past, such as travel costs, lodging, interruption to work and family life, have been minimized by hosting the meeting virtually. This closes the justice gap between those churches who have been able to afford to send delegates to the annual meeting and those who could not. Additional details can be found on covchurch.org. In this new format, we look forward to the moving of the Holy Spirit, the blazing center of our mission, to guide and lead us in our annual communal discernment process. It has been said that crisis is the cradle of innovation and necessity is the mother of invention. The Covenant Church is a creative church. As we remain faithful to the enduring message and mission of Jesus, let us press into innovation and birth new ministry methods, new wineskins ready to receive the new wine of the Spirit. In 2021, let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And we are not giving up. We work with God and for God. What is possible when we partner in ministry together through the power of the Holy Spirit? We see more people transformed by the love of Christ. We joyfully share and tell more of God's story. We see more marriages healed and families coming back together. We strengthen more churches, partners, and global personnel, and we extend compassion and hope to marginalized people. We will emerge from this crisis, not just three strands strong, but three strands stronger. 
We are in it together, going deeper in Christ and further in mission. This is the essence of missional pietism, which P.P. Waldenstrom understood so well. This is why we do what we do. I'll leave you with this beautiful verse from Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Now that is a promise worth living for.